been through the lot, now you know I'm coming through. When the growth look good on you, best believe they wanna screw now. I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark. Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like. Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now. Blow. Table turning like doorknobs, wow. Blow. I think I'm about to set sail. I'm a walking living legend, walking with my chest yeah. now. Life keeps dealing me cards, I keep feeling in love. Yes, 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 people, it is G, and we are back, music, it's up for you guys, we are back in the bill, then make sure, before we even head into anything, make sure you guys smash a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, we are on the road to 400 subscribers, so hopefully we can get that in the next couple of weeks, so today, um, another little do you want to call it a scout report, so to speak, um, taking a look at Musa Diaby of Bayer Leverkusen, uh, currently playing under Shabby Alonso. Um, good little victory they had um, on the weekend against Bayern Munich, beating them 2-1. Um, very, very good display. Um, Shabby Alonso doing pretty well over there. He's doing pretty, pretty well, you know, over there, you know, and Diaby is one of the players this season who have performed decent, has performed decently well this season. Um, he's always been a player I don't actually think that Liverpool have really ever been linked with him. If I'm being like, I've not really seen reports like that confirmed reports anyway, that Liverpool have ever really been linked with a player like Musa Diaby. But Liverpool fans seem to always want Diaby. Um, and I think it's because we want him to almost be that Salah successor, uh, someone to come in and challenge Salah. Um, I know a lot of people think, you know, someone like a DRB, will he come into the squad? Will he be a player who doesn't mind being a bit of a a bit of a bench player, so to speak? You know, someone who can just kind of rotate with a Salah and stuff like that. I mean, personally, I feel that, especially with the way that Liverpool's attack is, me personally, I, I, in the summer, you know, if Liverpool really, obviously this comes down to FSG and how much money they really want to give Klopp to kind of spend. But if Liverpool is serious and they and they really want to start making a mark and put in, making statements, so to speak, that, that that's probably the best way to put it. Making statement signings, he would definitely be one. I would be looking at that and saying, yeah, bring him in. Bring him in. You're letting Firmino go anyway. I mean, you're going to have the six attackers regardless. So bring him in. Bring him in and have that real quality. Someone who can play both left and right wing, you know, as we see here with his positioning, you know, he's played right wing, he's played left wing, he can play attack and midfield, he can play as almost like a second striker, you know, within the team. So I think that someone with these kind of qualities, he's got bloody hell, the bags of pace that this brother has got is crazy, absolutely crazy. And I think that would potentially fit into what Liverpool are trying to do. Now, we do have this thing here at Liverpool Football Club when it does come to, especially when it comes to like a player like Mo Salah, you know, and we think about this when we think about potentially signing players who could, who should be starting, you know, uh, in most teams. We always think, you know, will will Salah like the fact that we're getting in a Musa Diaby because it's going to be someone who's going to threaten his place? Will Van Dijk or Konate like the fact that Liverpool might sign a Vardy out or a Kim Min Jae, for example, because those are players who probably would start in 95% of teams. So does that mean that they, you know, it, it's all about how Jurgen Klopp manages the team. Now, I know Klopp is someone, this is why I don't think, I mean, not many managers can, to be fair. So I'm not going to just put this on Klopp, but this is why I don't think Klopp can manage like a big, big team, like a, you know, like a Real Madrid or a PSG or a team with big with a lot of big egos. Because I, I think that I don't think he does well with trying to handle egos in a general sense. I think he's someone who he wants to, especially with the type of, if you look at the profile of players that he does sign, he wants to be able to manage those kind of egos. And I think when you've got a player like Musa Diaby, he might fit into that bill of being able to mold that type of player manage that kind of ego and stuff like that it would just be more about the fact that Salah has turned himself into a player who has a very big ego so whether Salah likes it or not he needs to remember that this is for the team and to, and for the team to get better we do need to make sure that we've got quality all over the pitch even in because there, there is a real distinct possibility that Liverpool might be playing, you know, Europa League football next season and stuff like that. Are you going to be playing your first team players when you've got a Premier League match on a Sunday, for example? It's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So you're going to need to be able to have that level of rotation, which still makes the team still good enough. A bit like 
a little bit like what Arsenal were trying to do before they got knocked out by Sporting Lisbon, but a little bit like and then and with Arsenal, they just don't have enough depth in their team, in my opinion, to be able to do that. When you come up against better teams in that competition, you will get found out. And I think I don't want that for next season. And to be honest, it doesn't even matter which competition, whether it is the Champions League, if we make it, or it is the Europa League or the Conference League at this rate kind of thing. I just want to be able to say, all right, we've got in these players. If Salah's having a stinker for two, three games, you cannot keep playing the same player all the bloody time. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to continuously keep seeing that all the time where he's always playing and stuff like that. You know, this is a guy, you know, looking at his stats this season, 35 games, 12 goals, seven assists in all competitions, you know, eight goals and five assists in the Bundesliga, you know, two goals, you know, in the Champions League, uh, two goals in the Europa League with an assist, um, you know, got himself an assist in the uh, DFB Pokal. You know, it's, I think these are decent stats. These are very, very decent stats. That's 19 goals and assists that he has this season in 35 games. That's decent for someone who isn't putting, who isn't on like a level of like a Salah and stuff like that. You know, he's, he's in that kind of maybe potentially tier below. I think this might be the right kind of stage for him and maybe the right kind of time for him to be able to make that step up into a team like Liverpool, where you're going to be able to showcase your talent on a potentially bigger stage but again like I said it all depends on you know buying Leverkusen and stuff like that you know with the way that you know with, with the way that Javi Alonso's got the team playing you know they were near the bottom of the league you know when when he joined them and now they're you know fighting well they're pushing towards you know the, the upper excellence of the Bundesliga you know he's, he's got them playing really really good football you know, he's got uh, Musa Diaby, like I said, him playing um, decent football. And also the sheer fact that when you've got a manager like Jabby Alonso, now this is where he differs from someone like a Jurgen Klopp. When you've got a manager like Jabby Alonso, you sometimes might play this kind of formation. Something that Liverpool, obviously that's Liverpool's primary and probably only really formation that they play. 4-3-3, your bog standard, you know, you've got your free midfielders, you've got your free attackers. Florian Wirtz, who's going to come in and play almost like a false nine, you know, uh, DRB and uh, Ad 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 Adley are going to be on the wings, um, excuse me, and, you know, they, they're going to act like the wingers, the inverted wingers, whatever you want to kind of call them over on that side. But then when you can also do something like this, and this is something I really like um, with Xabi Alonso, hence why I guess a lot of people are talking about him, um, is when you're then able to do something like this where, you can play a different type of formation. You know, here they've got it as, you know, a three, four, two, one, you know, and he's got Musa Diaby and Florian Wirtz. Um, again, even with the strike, let me take this, uh, take this off. Um, even with um, Asmoon up top, they, I, I still think they're probably playing three, four, three, if anything, but obviously they've got it here, obviously put down as a three, four, two, one. But even with Asmoon up top, I think when I'm looking at that, it gives you so many different type of variations. Now, obviously, this ain't a video about Javi Alonso. We'll get onto that, you know, at another time. But I'm looking at Musa Diaby there and I'm thinking to myself, he's at least shown that he can play in that attacking midfield position. But then also that front three, so to speak, can then form a three with Diaby coming out wide, with Florian Wirtz coming out wide to then form that partnership up top. And I think having that versatility in Diaby's arsenal, I think can only bode well for him, you know, in the future. And again, like I said, it is testament, you know, to, you know, Xabi Alonso coming in and kind of implementing new and different styles, to obviously to come up against certain teams and the way that certain teams might sit with a low block. You know, um, certain teams might defend with their wing backs quite high. All of these uh, various different things. These are these are small little things that we definitely want to see. One from a manager, but also the fact that players are able to play in these said positions. Looking at obviously Diaby's heat map this season. Obviously, like I said, he is primarily a right winger, but he can play over there on that left hand side. Now, we've got too many damn players who play on the left hand side, to be honest with you anyway. So I am. I'm more than happy that I'm happy that he's versatile enough to be able to play in that position. But from when we've got so many players who already can play that position, I'm kind of like, I'm a bit tired of seeing left wingers in this team. You know, we signed um, Darwin Nunes. He's now turned into like a left winger. We've already got Luis Diaz on that side. Cody Gappo can also play their plays. Basically was supposed to be signed, I thought, as a left winger. You know, Diego Jota can also play there as well. We seem to have uh, so many 
left wingers or players who play on that left hand side and I don't think we've got really any who can play on that right hand side you've really got Mo and then it goes down to Harvey Elliott and then it goes down to Ben Doak or Kai Gordon you know you're looking at those kind of that kind of quality on that right hand side and I just don't think it's going to be enough for Liverpool moving forward to have that level of quality you know down that kind of side and I think that's one of the reasons as to why I'm looking at someone like a Musa Diaby you know someone who can play in that position someone who I think kind of replicates the same kind of attributes that a Mo Salah you know has and if you look here at Mo Salah versus you know um Musa Diaby from this season you know I'll take this take this off for you guys you know I'm looking at certain attributes here and I'm looking at certain statistics here you know he's got a better shot accuracy this season he's got a better conversion rate than Mo this season you know crosses completed uh cross accuracy Mo's got that but look at the crosses completed 71 in comparison to 18 you know from you know from mo from mo this season now obviously again the type of player that mo is and the way that mo plays he isn't the type of winger who's going to be running down the wing and obviously putting balls in you know so uh, pause uh, so to speak but i'm looking at that and jesus but you know that's over th that's more than three times more the amount of crosses attempted you know from Musa Diaby, and obviously, hence why the, the crossing accuracy is obviously going to be probably a tad bit lower because Mo's putting in hardly any crosses, to be honest with you. Even the passing passes attempted is not that far off of a um of a uh, Mo Salah this season. You know, um funnily enough, he's got more left footed goals in the in his league than Mo does in our league, which I find quite funny. But again, the conversion rate, 19.51 to 16.92, the shot accuracy, you know, 50% to, you know, Musa Diaby, 68.29%. You know, shots on target. Mo's getting 33 um, of those on target. Musa Diaby's getting 28 of those on target. So, you know, not, again, this isn't to say Musa Diaby is as good as Mo Salah. No, I think Mo Salah is obviously of that world-class kind of level. So, of course, there, and obviously with how crap Liverpool have obviously been this season, so some it, you, you take stats with a pinch of salt in certain areas, but there are things you can take away from certain statistics when you are reading them um, in regards to, especially if it's a player that you like or a player you're trying to compare or a player you think could potentially do a similar job to, you know, the, the one that's already being done by a player in that position. And I think when I look at all of these kind of, when I look at these kind of statistics from Musa Diaby, I do believe that he might be a player that, I mean, there could be other wingers out there. Uh, guys, let me know in the comment section below if you think there are other wingers out there that Liverpool could potentially sign. Um, I'm not saying that Musa Diaby is the only right winger out there that Liverpool should and could sign. Um, but he's definitely a winger. I think he's been... I, I just think Liverpool fans have always spoken about him, but I've never really seen any concrete kind of news in regards to like a Musa Diaby potentially coming to Liverpool. Hence the reason why I'm like, this is just more... I don't want to say fantasy because that would be that would sound a bit disrespectful, but just more someone we probably would like to see, you know, in that position. And he's an up and coming kind of player, you know. Currently, you know, he's had a, um, I think, a few caps, obviously, for France. Um, he's moving up. He's moving up, to be honest with you. And I think that his next move is going to be vitally important. He might not even need to make that next move. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with Bayern Leverkusen this season. Uh, well, this season, but also moving on to next season with the way that Xabi Alonso has got this team playing, you might want to put them down as favourites to potentially win the Bundesliga, especially if we see another team win the Bundesliga this season, Borussia Dortmund obviously being top of that. You know, we might see someone else next season. You know, things might potentially shift in that Bundesliga, you know, for a couple of seasons before Bayern obviously inevitably come back on top so these are all various different things things that he's going to think about how much money obviously again the big question that you know uh haunts liverpool if i'm being totally honest with you um you know in regards to trying to sign players because ultimately if we're not going to get the money from fsg or we don't have enough money to spend or you know Klopp chooses to use the money that he does have to spend in different areas than someone like a Musa Diaby, who I don't really even know how much would even potentially cost, might just be out of our reach. But he is a player that I do like. He is a player that I think Liverpool would do well to sign, you know, potentially in the future. So I think it's just more of a waiting game to be able to see, 
you know, what potentially may happen with a player like this. But again, when I'm looking at these stats, 35 games, 12 goals, 7 assists, as I said before, good numbers that he's putting up. So, you know, let, let, let's wait and see on that. But who would you guys, let me, you know, let me know in the comment section below, who would you guys like for us to actually sign, you know, in that kind of position or on the right wing? I think we do need to start looking at right wingers more so. And at the end of the day, Mo can't go forever. And even if Mo is still Mo, so to speak, and he's able to put up decent numbers, at the end of the day, we're going to need to, one, obviously look towards the future. Two, he can't play all the time. You know, he, he just can't play all the time. I mean, I know he wants to play all the time, but we then need to start having these contingency plans because anything can happen. We've spoken about Mo's injury record being impeccable since he's been at Liverpool. I think the only really big injury he's ever had was that injury that he had in the Champions League final against Real Madrid. And that was the last game of the season. So, you know, he had the whole summer to kind of recoup and come back stronger and better than ever. But you never know what will happen in the future. And I'm just worried that something will eventually happen because it just happens like that in football. Something will never to be happened to Mo. When that happens, Liverpool will be lost down that right-hand side. We won't really know how to play. We won't really have anyone else to really come in like that. And if we do have anyone to actually come in, it's just going to look a bit disjointed and blah, blah, blah. Then we're going to be talking about how much we miss Mo and how much we should have signed someone in the same position that we're in when it comes to centre-back, in the same position that we're in when it comes to central midfield. I don't want to keep going through this. It's, it's just getting boring. I just think have these contingency plans sooner rather than later. And then you don't need to necessarily worry. But you know, we will wait and see and we'll see, obviously, how that goes. But, you know, that was kind of my little touch on Musa Diaby. As I said, guys, let me know in the comment section below what type of um, player do you think we should sign? Is Musa Diaby the one you think we should really go for? Drop me some names. I'll take a little look at them. Do a little, I guess, scout report, so to speak, on the type of player that they are. And then we'll take it from there. But as it says at the bottom, guys, make sure you smash that like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. As I said before, we are on the road to 400 subscribers. Let's try and smash that in, in potentially before the end of March. I know that's quite a big ask, but I trust you guys to be able to help your brother out. I'm G. That's today's scout report. Musa Diaby, done and dusted. And I am out.